So, Phil Plate from BadAstronomy.com, and I'm doing my live chat as I'm recording this, and I was just asked, what is the nearest supernova candidate to the Earth? Now, supernova is a star that explodes, and there are two kinds. Uh, stars like the Sun cannot explode. They can not explode. The Sun will not explode. Got it? Not. Everybody always says, the Sun's going to explode. No. You need a much more massive star. It has to be about 20 or more times the mass of the Sun to explode. And after it lives its life out, basically the core runs out of fuel and it collapses. And it does two things. The outer layers of the star collapse down and they sort of rebound off the core. It sets off sort of a shock wave. Also, because of very complicated physical processes, neutrinos are created in the core. And these are very ghostly particles. They can pass through, you know, light years of lead without even seeing that it's there. But this incoming material gets a lot denser than lead, and so it actually absorbs a lot of these neutrinos. A tremendous amount of energy is absorbed by that gas. And when you dump a huge amount of energy into matter, it basically explodes outwards, and that blows the star up. And so that's one way you can get a star that explodes. Another way is a star like the sun, at the end of its life, sheds its outer layers, doesn't blow up, it just blows them off and it leaves the tiny, dense core of the star behind. It's about the size of the Earth, but it has about half the mass of the Sun. It's called a white dwarf, and so it's incredibly dense. Now, if that's orbiting another star, if I have my minty of science and my squishy brain of science, and this is a normal star, and this is the white dwarf, if they're orbiting each other, the white dwarf can draw matter off of the normal star, and that matter piles up on the surface. And the surface gravity of the white dwarf is incredibly strong. It really squeezes that material. Enough of that material piles up, it'll get squeezed and get very hot, and the pressure gets really high, and it can fuse. Hydrogen will fuse into helium. It's like igniting a bomb. In fact, it is igniting a thermonuclear bomb. And that sets up a, a chain reaction that can actually detonate the entire star, and it blows up. And the amount of energy these things release is incredible. It's 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 as much energy as the sun releases in its entire lifetime, and it will release that energy in just a few seconds. So it's an incredible amount of energy. Well, it turns out um, there are lots of stars near the sun that can blow up, but not close enough to hurt us. It just so happens that in my book, Death from the Skies, I discuss this, and in the very back of the book, there is a table of nearby stars that can blow up. The nearest one is Spica which is the brightest star in the constellation of Virgo. And um, in this book, I have its mass at about 11 times the mass of the sun. So it's borderline blow upable. That's a scientific term, blow upable. Um, its distance is 260 light years. The next one after that is Shala, or as I like to say, Shala, which nobody ever gets, but it's from Ferris Bueller. If you don't get that, that's okay. That's in Scorpius, that's 360 light years away. And you can go down this list, and it turns out most people say the nearest star is Betelgeuse and Orion, but Betelgeuse is, is actually uh, much farther away than, than several other stars. But the thing is, if any of these stars blow up, um, they're way too far away to hurt us. A supernova has to be about mm, 50 light years, roughly, or closer to the Earth before it hurts the ozone layer and uh, irradiates us with, with particles and gamma rays and all that stuff. It has to be very close. The nearest star is, is hundreds of light years away, so it's way too far, the nearest star that can blow up. So it's way too far away to do any damage to us. We are, at the moment, safe from a supernova of that type. And it turns out, for the white dwarf orbiting the, orbiting the normal star, the minty and squishy brain of science here, the nearest one, ah, look at that. It, it blew up, it's gone. It's ejected itself from, from my system. Um, the nearest star like that is, is, is even much farther away. So we're not in any danger from those as well. So we're totally safe from a nearby supernova. There's nothing to worry about. But of course, I have an entire chapter in my book about this. You can read about it. And if, if there were one close enough, you can read about all the horrifying things that can happen. But uh, luckily, we're safe from that. We have much bigger things to worry about, like you know asteroid impacts and solar flares and stuff like that. Um, but even those, you know, I don't lie awake night worrying about them. Uh, that's just something to be concerned about, stuff we can prevent. But as far as the supernovas and gamma ray bursts and black holes and all that stuff, we're safe, we're okay. So enjoy the night sky because it's, it's a little scary, but it's also very cool.